longer under bright diffused light, but generally they're treated as accent plants. It's something that's going to be beautiful for several weeks and then most people throw them away or give them away. Um, the same with bromeliads and there is so much uh, variation in bromeliads. This is a Guzmania and this one is a Neoregelia. And um, as house plants, as accent pieces, they are very, very long lived, anywhere from probably two to six months for most of them. Um, after that time, they are challenging to get them to rebloom. Most people do discard them. Uh, but you get so much beauty and so much impact for such a long time. I mean, you could conceivably buy two or three of these a year and um, have just a really nice showpiece in your home. Uh, the bromeliads can actually even be put under low light conditions as if you look through the mall. If you go in the mall, there will be mass plantings of bromeliads. Again, because they use them as temporary things. Under lower light conditions, they may not last quite as long, but, um, but they still will, will be beautiful and very, very showy. Okay. And then we will move on to um, other areas. Um, this is a ficus. I'm sure you all are familiar with ficus. This is actually a variegated form of it. Uh, this is a yucca back here. Um, crotons, right here, the beautiful, colorful foliage of a croton. These could also be grown under moderate light, but again, the more light, the more color they're going to have in the leaves. Um, back here is an aurelia, and aurelias are some of my favorite plants. They're just just such a neat group. Um, there's some have leaves that are round with serration on the edges. Uh, this is a real lacy looking Ming Aurelia. And um, they're just, just such, I don't know why I have such an affinity for them, but I do. It's just something about them. Um, under bright conditions, this is a Strelitzia. I don't know if it's on the list or not. What do you spell? Um, Strelitzia, <laughs> S T R E L I. T Z I A. Does that look right? <laughs> Did I throw any extra letters in? <laughs> um, but this is actually, I don't know if you've seen the orange and blue bird of paradise. This is related to it. The one that is grown inside supposedly gets a white flower. However, <laughs> under normal household conditions, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the yuccas right here can also take bright light. To me, bright light would be more like south and west exposures. Some of these could actually even go in windows like that, in a south or west window. Um, others like the Aurelia would probably want that light very diffused, but it re needs really bright diffused light. Um, this is a Rex Begonia, a little bit more challenging to grow inside. Aurelias are a little challenging as well. Um, you know, because of the drier air in homes, some plants can be a little prone to spider mite. And this would be one that may have a little bit of issue with that. But again, properly maintained, that's not nearly as big of a problem. Um, Rex begonias, and I didn't pick a really pretty one, but I'm sure you all are familiar with these. The coloration on these can be purple and pink and silver and just any combination. They are so unique. They bloom a little bit, but really the big calling card is the uh, foliage. There's even one called an iron cross begonia which has kind of a light green uh, leaf, kind of real, real crinkly, and it has a black kind of cross type shape in the center of it. Real, real unique group. Um, also something, this is called a spring cactus. And they are something that we've finally been able to get. They will bloom obviously this time of year. Other than that, you're gonna treat them very much like a Christmas cactus. Just keep them in real bright diffused light, a little bit toward the dry side, never bone dry, and uh, properly fertilized and all. Each year about this time, they should start blooming again. And when they open, I mean, they are just lovely. They are just like way open, so it's a real, real pretty plant. Um, some of the succulents, if you're interested in succulents, they can also be grown under brighter uh, conditions. Of course, ponytail palms. And ponytail palms can even be done in moderate light. So there's always a little bit of variation if you're willing to experiment. You know, if something doesn't work, always have a plan B in mind. Um, jade plants, of course. And a couple others. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Uh -huh. Did you have trouble with the traffic? 
Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> That's an A. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple others I wanted to bring in just because I think they are so much fun. This is obviously called String of Pearls, and this one is called String of Hearts. And again, if you want to try them inside, bright uh, situations would be best for them. Now, somebody I think was uh, asking Donna about toxicity of, uh, of String of Pearls. And we looked it up in the book. A lot of house plants can have some moderate, and I hate to use the word toxicity, I don't know what the real word would be, but they may cause something as simple as stomach upset or something like that if a cat was to ingest them. If you have young children in a home, I would be very careful, cautious about putting plants out anyway because they are just such wonderful, curious creatures. So they've got to check everything out. So um, if you want house plants, I would put them up high. Um, <laughs> You know, these, in the book, it said some Sinisos are toxic, some are not. So um, it's just really a matter of um, finding resources, whether you have to go online or get a book. If you were to look at this book, almost every single plant in the world is in this book. Every plant that we try to grow as a house plant is in here. Again, it may just be that it, it just will cause upset stomach. It may be something that will be much more dangerous. So if you have pets or curious cats or anything like that, you really do need to be cautious about bringing uh, plants into the house. I'm sure you all know uh, Duncane or Diffenbachia. That one uh, definitely does have uh, toxicity issues. If it is ingested, it'll cause, um, I think, a swelling of mucous membranes in the mouth for starters. <laughs> so it's definitely best to, to err on the side of caution. Um, let's see, for fertilizing, plants. We use the same things we do outside for the most part. Um, the has to grow or the natural solutions liquid. Which is everybody. Um, for house plants, because they don't grow as rapidly usually, about once a month is usually good enough. I don't know that it's really necessary to do them that, you know, much more often than that. How yes, do you protect from the, the mites you were talking about? The mites, a couple different things. Um, certain plants, um, palms, I didn't really bring palms except this Neanthabella. Um, palms are really great if you need larger plants. Uh, there are Kentia palms and uh, Rapist palms, Arica palms, all of which are wonderful to really add some drama, um, to really fill up a larger space. Um, they can, again, be a little prone to spider mite um, under under poor care. Like I say, the dry air in a home is just an issue which is going to, you know, make that situation a little more possible. Um, you can do a couple different things. An occasional take the plant outside, occasionally spray with seaweed and molasses, um, or even take it outside and just kind of hose it off. Of course, being that we have hard water, you have to be careful to, to not get an accumulation of, of water spots on them. I used to always hose my uh, palms off and never really had that issue for some reason. But um, the, the liquid uh, seaweed and molasses can be beneficial. Also, occasionally, like I said, the foliage needs to be clean. If foliage gets real dusty, the plant can't take um, moisture in, it can't take nutrients in. Uh, the microbes living on the leaves, the beneficial microbes will suffer. Uh, green glow is the only thing that I like to use to clean plants. Although plant wash is good. For interior plants, I really like this. I actually dilute this product, a little shiny for me, but um, I usually dilute it a third to half with water. And um, it gives just a really nice gloss without looking artificial. They used to sell some in a spray, an aerosol spray. I don't like that stuff. There are propellants and things in there that are not necessary. Never use an aerosol, obviously. But, um, but this, like I say, diluted with water.